Today, I'll be sharing the top seven restaurants in DeBerry, Florida. Now, these are not listed in any particular order, although the best restaurant at the end is going to surprise you. Plus, I'll include a link to two other videos focusing on the best restaurants in DeLand and Sanford, so be sure to stick around for those. First, let's start with Nona Maria's. Nona Maria's is a little casual family-style Italian restaurant in the Winn-Dixie Plaza on the corner of 1792 and High Banks Road. Now, you might want to discount this. I did because it's in a grocery store plaza, right? Well, I'd say you'd be wrong. Nona Maria's is all about the atmosphere, and the service is always great here. They've got Italian music playing, and they really try to make it nice in here, which I believe they do really well, especially when you can get quite a bit of a meal for 20 bucks. I really like their pizzas here, although their menu is generally made from scratch Italian dishes. It's funny though, as Italian as Anona Maria's is, their pizza is really good New York style pizza. Maybe they've got New York style pizza on the menu in Italy, I don't know. I don't think it's on the menu, but one time a server offered up some limoncello cake and man was it good. I'm not so crazy about their garlic knots in here, but I suppose they're hit and miss like so many restaurants. Next is a Swamp House Riverfront Grill. Now, I've never been a huge fan of the Swamp House per se, although I did participate in a half marathon they did several years back. It was one of my best runs ever. The food is pretty decent in here and they've got a good variety, from burgers to steaks and all sorts of seafood, even gator bites. The portions are good and for seafood and steaks, I think it's not priced too bad. But if I go to the Swamp House, I'm usually going there for the atmosphere as it's a great place to meet, uh, to meet up with friends and maybe have a drink. The Swamp House is really about the casual atmosphere. There's nothing really bougie about it. Being located way down High Banks Road on the St. John's River, it's a great place to relax with a view of the St. John's. They've got a bar downstairs, they've got live music, and sometimes you can even come for a meal and rent a boat and take a ride up the river. We've been out there and had manatees come right up to us, and if you're down from up north, it's a decent place to see an alligator. In my mind, the Swamp House is better in the winter months. I prefer to sit outside when I go to the Swamp House, although sometimes it can get a bit sticky in the summer months when the humidity really gets going. Before we get to a pricier, fancier restaurant, maybe you're thinking, who says these restaurants are good? Or maybe you take exception to my comments here. Well, I've got a culinary degree, but that was like eons ago. My only credential is that I love to eat and I love to bury. However, I'd actually love to hear your comments and what you disagree with. Or maybe there's another restaurant in DeBerry that I didn't mention here. Simply put those comments in the comments section below so that other viewers can benefit from your knowledge. I'm Chuck Shaver and I'm a local realtor that's been selling homes in the DeBerry area for many years. So I'm in all sorts of restaurants all the time. If you're finding value here, then click the like button as a small way of supporting this channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then click the subscribe button and click that little notification bell that'll notify you whenever we post other videos just like this. La Strega Bistro is one of the two new kids in town on my top seven list, and it's one that could be considered the nicest of all the restaurants here. But it's not what I consider to be the best overall restaurant. It's an elegant little Italian restaurant, which is in a, kind of an odd location. It's in this little business plaza right on 1792. A bowl of pasta is gonna run you 15 to 20 bucks, and an entree will get you from, you know, 25 to 40 bucks. And I believe this is the nicest food you're gonna find in all of DeBerry. I've heard all sorts of opinions on La Strega. Some people rave that it's the greatest ever, and then I've heard others saying the complete opposite. While I haven't seen it, I've heard that the chef will come out and interact with the guests, which is apparently very nice. The atmosphere here is warm and inviting, and has a, you know, has this wood fire oven and a wine room, and the food is really fantastic. The calamari is absolutely amazing, and anything with the buffalo mozzarella is a hit in my mind. La Strega is really meant to be enjoyed, so give yourself plenty of time here. If you just want a quick Italian meal to fill your gut, maybe check out Nona Maria's or another one that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Maybe, that's, maybe those are better options. This is a great place for anniversaries and other events when you're able to spend a bit more time and money. Next, let's talk about Pepe's Cantina, which is a great little Mexican restaurant right on 1792. Now, maybe I shouldn't include Pepe's because they've got a few locations, but I really like this little place and it surely doesn't feel like a chain. The atmosphere has a trendy little Mexican flair to it. I really like it. The menu is really hit or miss, but they do a lot of things well, although I don't think I've ever had a bad meal in here. What they do well, they do really well, and that's why I keep coming back to Pepe's. They've got some really good margaritas and some good vegan options too. The tacos and the table side guac are a couple of my favorites. If you want it hot, ask for the house hot sauce. It'll make me sweat and turn like three shades of red, but if that's your thing, you're gonna love it. 
They've also got a Hawaiian fajita that comes served in a pineapple, which is pretty cool. I will say that I personally would avoid the chicken and the kiros off the, off the brunch menu, but I love this little place and I definitely think it's worth a shot. It's not kiros? It's churros. Is it? Are you sure of that? Next, let's talk about Dakine Poke. It's this little deli type place with this surf shop motif that you're gonna drive right by if you're not paying attention. I might even say that it's almost out of place here in DeBerry. You know, we don't have much sushi here. However, I've been in this little place a couple times and it's been fantastic each time I've been there. Poke is kind of like sushi in a bowl with rice, seafood, vegetables, edamame, and these great little sauces. I like it because I can get a fresh meal that makes me feel like I'm eating healthy and I can get out the door for like 15 bucks, which I really like. Now this little place is nothing fancy, just a tiny little place with a few little tables. And although I've eaten in here, it's probably better suited to be taken for takeout. The Salted Goat is the other new kid in town, much like La Strega that I spoke of earlier. The Salted Goat, however, is really nothing like anything I've spoken of thus far today. So what's up with that name? The Salted Goat. <laughs> Anyways, this little place is right across the street from Nona Maria's and it focuses on locally sourced, high quality, farm fresh ingredients. They actually list some of the farms that they partner with right on their menu. The menu changes seasonably here as the, some ingredients are simply not available during certain times of the year. I love the caramelized scallops and I know I'm not the only one. There was a woman at the table next to us one time that brought in her friends specifically to try the scallops because she had ordered them previously and loved them. The food has always been good here and the presentation is all also visually appealing. They've got sandwiches, burgers, steaks and seafood, and some local beers along with daily specials. A meal in here will run you between 10 and 15 bucks at lunch and 20 to 30 or 35 bucks for dinner. They've also got a decent wine menu which includes several wines from the country of Georgia which I personally thought was pretty cool. You can sit inside or outside in their patio here and the Salted Goat has a more eclectic contemporary atmosphere. They've got this graffiti on the walls, which I don't know if it really works so well, uh, in my opinion. Remember that these restaurants are my favorites. I doubt that any of them are Michelin rated, and I don't even know or care how many stars they've got. They're not my favorites because they cost the most, or even because they have the best steaks or the best seafood. It's really quite arbitrary, and the best restaurant is the best restaurant because I've been going there for years, and I've never had a bad experience here, and that is Goodfellas, down on Enterprise Road. Now, you might be thinking that Chuck really likes Italian, and you'd be right, but Goodfellas always has good service, they've always got a good atmosphere and great food. It's always hot with a great presentation. Some will say that Goodfellas has a similar menu to Nona Maria's, and I really wouldn't argue that, but I believe that Goodfellas just has charm like nobody else on this list. The pizzas are great in here, and I think you can even do take and bake here. Yes, they're still New York style pizzas, which I love. Although the other day I got the chicken Antonio and it was fantastic. Plus, as nice as the atmosphere is in here, I always feel like I'm getting a good value for my buck. I think that chicken Antonio was like 11 bucks or something. Heck, a number one at Chick-fil-A is gonna cost me more than that and I wouldn't even get leftovers. The only downside that I can think of for Goodfellas is the wait, as they do get really busy in there sometimes. I guess if that wait is real long, you could go next doors to Wise Guys and have a drink while you wait. But I believe Goodfellas is usually worth that wait. Here's that video I spoke of earlier, along with another one that might interest you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.